Nearly every month, there's news about the Yellowstone supervolcano making headlines somewhere, and this one is no exception. Maybe it's a series of earthquakes or small, steam-fueled eruptions that get the hearts of news editors and disaster response teams racing. Or, in times like these, a new study shedding light on the prospect of the next big eruption. Sometimes it seems as if the entire world is waiting for Yellowstone to erupt, almost wanting it, in a way. So, what do these latest findings reveal, and is it good news or bad news? Let's dig deeper. In January 2025, researchers from the United States Geological Survey USGS, published a new analysis in the journal Nature that revealed exactly what's happening beneath Yellowstone. By measuring and mapping the electrical conductivity of rocks, they were able to paint a three-dimensional picture of how much magma is present, and where it's located. This is because molten rock can have conductivity up to a thousand times greater than solid rock, making it quite easy to spot. The bad news is that there's a lot of magma down there. The good news is that it's not all in one place, nor does it fill a vast underground void. Most of the magma is, in fact, confined within pockets, each comprising 2 to 30 percent, by volume, of the hot, dense rock in which it is confined. Furthermore, the areas of magma-bearing rock are not all contiguous, so even if the volcano erupts, it is unlikely that they will all erupt at once. However, the most interesting revelation this study reveals is where the next hotspot of volcanic activity will be. It turns out that the magma is not evenly distributed. About 400 to 500 cubic kilometers, 95 to 120 cubic miles, of sticky, silica-rich rhyolite magma resides here. This is far more than the volume of magma erupted in the massive Mesa Falls eruption in Yellowstone some 1.3 million years ago. Furthermore, hot basaltic magma rising from the underlying mantle pumps even more heat into this part of the volcano, keeping the rhyolite magma hot and, over time, increasing the total volume of molten rock. This may sound confusing, at least it is, but remember that magma is everywhere. All of these pockets of molten rock need to connect and coalesce before they reach sufficient volume to erupt in a single, massive eruption. Nevertheless, the authors of the Nature paper hypothesized that this part of the volcano will be the most likely location for the next major eruption. The big question is, when? There has been much talk about Yellowstone's next major eruption, but, as recent research shows, this is not the case. In addition to the Mesa Falls eruption mentioned above, there have been two other much larger eruptions, the Huckleberry Ridge eruption, which occurred more than 2 million years ago, and the Lava Creek eruption, which is 630,000 years old. The average recurrence period for these three eruptions is 735,000 years, so while there is no statistical precision, given the very small sample size, there is no reason to believe that another supereruption is imminent. It's also worth noting that the Mesa Falls eruption, while large, was not large enough to be called a supereruption, as its sediment volume fell below the required 1,000 cubic kilometers threshold. As a result, the return period between these two major eruptions is close to one and a half million years. In reality, the next Yellowstone supereruption is likely a long way off, but it will certainly happen. To get a sense of what a future major Yellowstone eruption might look like, we need to look back at previous eruptions, which share many similarities. All involved massive explosions that caused the erupting magma to erupt and produce large amounts of ash. Furthermore, each eruption was followed by a collapse of the crust over the empty magma reservoir, resulting in the formation of a giant caldera. The current 60-kilometer-wide, 35-mile-wide, Yellowstone caldera formed during the last Lava Creek eruption, 